From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Pharmacist On Call. Good evening and Happy New Year to Nashville, Middle Tennessee, Southern Kentucky, those of you as far west as Jackson, those of you as far east as McMinnville. Welcome to Pharmacist On Call with your host, Dr. Sean Pruitt. And if you are watching this show, I am your community pharmacist. Well, uh, Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to 2019, our first show of the year. Uh, so uh, hopefully it'll be a pretty interesting one based on your calls. This is your one hour forum where you get to call in with those burning questions that you don't have time to ask your doctors or your pharmacists because quite frankly, they are busy. But for this one hour, I do. So call in with those questions. The producer's gonna flash the, the number on the phone. On, uh, on the television there, so I'll make sure you give us a call with those questions. Uh, we wanted to get into some, as we typically do, some shout outs and condolences. Uh, first of all, I wanted to extend our condolences to the family of Dorena Kelton, a longtime friend of the pharmacy. Uh, passed away in uh, November, uh, and thank you to her, her brother and uh, her niece who came to inform me. Uh, so you all are in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, wanted to get into some birthdays. Uh, first of all, wanted to Ebony, our pharmacy technician. Her birthday was yesterday, so happy birthday, Ebony. Uh, my niece, Chelsea Sinclair Thomas, uh, also wanted to wish her a happy birthday, and I think she will be, uh, her birthday will be Saturday. And last but not least, uh, my oldest, my firstborn child, uh, Shauna Lanier Pruitt, happy birthday to you. Her birthday will actually be tomorrow. She will be 15 years old, so uh, Shorty, happy birthday. Uh, wanted to um, briefly talk about uh, something in the news that you all probably heard about and you're probably unsure of what it is. Uh, it's the, uh, the farm bill uh, dealing with uh, hemp, marijuana, what have you. So what it did was move hemp from a Schedule I uh, drug class uh, off of that to know where it is now legal in all 50 states. Uh, so not everyone had legalized uh, the hemp products that you see me talk about and recommend. Uh, so the, the new law is in effect, and I believe it was uh, it passed maybe a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so any product uh, from cannabis, as long as it has 0.3% uh, or less uh, THC in it, full spectrum, uh, that is now legal in all 50 states in the United States. Uh, you do still have your pure CBD products, which you know shouldn't even be an issue. Uh, I believe that for medical research, the limit is 0.6% uh, THC. And so it looks like we're, we're pushing ahead and, uh, and kudos to the politicians who got it done. They see that these products are uh, helping a tremendous amount of patients and certainly just from personal testimonies that I receive at the pharmacy that, that many patients have been helped by this. Uh, so again, kudos, the Farm Bill passed. So uh, CBD hemp, legal in all 50 states now. Uh, also dealing with new laws since we're in January, uh, some of the laws had basically been passed in July, but now they e effectively take effect now. Uh, so in dealing with pharmacy, uh, of course, gabapentin is now a Schedule V narcotic, uh, which is gonna require a prescription. Uh, only, you can only get a maximum of maybe five refills on it. So it's not something that you can get a, you know, a year's worth anymore. And then the other thing is, for those of us who are pharmacists, we're now checking the controlled substance monitoring database on every prescription that comes through. And this monitoring database uh, is kind of a checks and balance system which keeps patients from doctor shopping and pharmacy shopping. So it lets us know if you've been feeling, and I don't know if you all know this or not, but yeah, it can tell us whether you've been going to different pharmacies, no matter where they are, uh, because on the Tennessee database, we're now linked up with almost 30 states. So even if you grow, go outside of the state, we can tell that you've been somewhere else and what you've gotten and when you got it and what doctor you got it from. Uh, so that is now law. Uh, let's see. Partial fills on initial controlled substance prescriptions. So some of you who are on TenCare or Medicare Part D, you're probably getting a shock when you go to the pharmacy, probably the last few months or so. And the insurance will only pay for seven days or so, or five days or so. So this appears to be the the government's efforts to uh, kind of quell some of the opiate abuse. So what they're doing now is limiting patients to an initial week supply. But it looks like we've got our first call here, and so we're gonna get to that. Welcome to Pharmacist on Call, let me help you. Hi, 
I was calling to see about the Tamiflu medication on Sunday. I was diagnosed with the flu. Yes, ma'am. They uh, put me on the Tamiflu. Now, my husband's a long-haul trucker. He's coming in tomorrow. Am I still at risk of giving him the flu? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you're still infectious. And how long am I going to have the flu to the point where other people around me can catch it from me? As long as it's active in it, it as long as it's active in you, you can pass that from a sneeze, from a cough, or you sneezing on a spoon and someone eating off of it. You know, once the influenza is in your bloodstream, you are contagious. Even when I'm... Uh yeah, I'm taking precautions, but I'm, you know, still the number one bottle washer around here. Uh, yeah. I'm cooking dinner and everything for my family. Like I said, I've been on I think medication long, since Sunday, but am yeah. I going to just as long have as to you, give it to everybody? No, no, not as long as you're not exposing the food to your body fluid. So if you sneeze or cough on it, you know, or breathe very close to the cornbread, you should be okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I sure appreciate your, your time question, and by your the help. Way. Yes, ma'am. You're welcome. All right. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. Yeah, good question, by the way. So, yeah, take uh, certain precautions. Number one is going to be wash your hands. Uh, if someone coughs in front of you, don't walk into it. You know, you cover your face. Uh, and if you are the person coughing, please cover your mouth. I mean, just out of common courtesy. And uh, sometimes during the cold flu season, we forget that. But make sure your hands stay washed. Okay. All right. So. We've got Sherry on line two. Welcome to Farm System Call. I mean, we help you. Yes, thank you, Sherry. Hello. I have been on some medication, mm -hmm. and um, I'm trying to find out that I have really had that virus that can't be over. I've had it for almost a month now, and as the medicine I'm taking is all. Okay, so you're taking meloxicam and you're saying that you're trying to get over a virus. They are totally, uh -huh. yeah, they're totally unrelated. A meloxicam is a, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. So it's actually for arthritis. It's not an antibiotic. Well, I'm taking it and it's so much. I can't get well because I take the virus. And I'm by myself and now they tell me that I have to levitate my legs and everything to make sure I have the uh, muscles from with my legs, my feet all the way up to my back. And I've been taking this medicine. Now it got me worried about it because I can't get well. Okay, so what are the symptoms that you're having? I was throwing up, diarrhea, coughing real bad, and I was my whole head well, yeah, the meloxicam is not for that. So it sounds like you, like the first caller, need a round of Tamiflu. Or, uh, yeah, it so, sounds like you have a stomach virus or the flu virus. And they're both going to kill themselves off over time. You said you've had this going on for over a month? Yes, sir. And I can't even get a part of the bag. Okay. Yeah, then it's time to have a discussion with your doctor, and uh, and let's make sure that that meloxicam wasn't given to you by mistake. Uh, so hopefully the pharmacy didn't misread the prescription that your doctor actually wrote for you. But give your doctor a call and say, hey, uh, my pharmacist told me that meloxicam is not supposed to help me with this virus that I have, and are you sure this is what you meant to give me? Yeah, all right. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. You're welcome. Bye-bye. All righty. Bye-bye. Betty, welcome to Pharmacist Don't Call. Let me we help you. Hello, Betty? Betty? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Welcome to Pharmacist Don't Call. How may we help you? I 
Hey, want to ask you about the blood pressure tablet that they're called uh, that's causing cancer that they had on television today, and I'll have I'll have to spell the word for you, sir. Go ahead. V a l s a r. Yes, ma'am. P a n. Okay. So. Okay. Now let me tell you this. My doctor has me on the tablet, and and this is the way it is spelled. It's spelled L O S. A R T A N. Now, okay. what is the difference in them two pills? Well, they're the same. They're in the same drug class. They affect the uh, the renin angiotensin cycle in the kidneys, and that's how they keep your blood pressure down. So they're the same type of uh, of drug, but you know they they're different. You think they're different? You don't think this would be what they're calling uh, that would cause cancer of the kidneys? Well, it's not the drug per se that's causing cancer. The issue is is that during the manufacturing process, yes, the, sir. the drug got contaminated with a cancer causing agent. That's what uh -huh. the that's what the issue was. And so uh, while they were manufacturing it, they found that some of the batch called uh, I think the chemical was NDMA. Uh, and so it's actually used in making rocket fuel. So what they did was recall all of Valsartan, Losartan, Valsartan, ACTZ, Valsartan with amlodipine. So yeah, but th that's what was recalled. So it's not the fact that the drug is causing cancer in and of itself. It's just that when it was being made, uh, it came in contact with some cancer causing chemicals. So you think what I'm on is still okay to take? Yes, ma'am. If it hasn't been recalled, you are okay. Uh, well, that's that's all. All I know, they just said the VL, and see, it, VA is what's uh, different on the other that I'm taking. And I thought, well, look, look, did they leave that off? Yeah, they are. They're both no, they're both blood pressure medications. It's Valsartan and Losartan, okay. two different medications, but uh -huh. they're the same type of medication. Mm, okay, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mm, bye bye. All right. Welcome to Pharmacist Don't Call. Let me we help you. Hello, caller. Hello. Yes, ma'am. How can we help you? Uh, I received a pamphlet in the mail, and I was just wondering what you could say about it. Uh, it's called a hemp gummy a day melts your pain and stress away, and they claim it's uh, legal in the U.S. and it. Uh, not have it forming, and it's no no part of uh, uh, the drugs that's going around. Uh, yes, ma'am. And so that was uh, pretty much part of the discussion that I was having initially. So hemp comes in different. The hemp products, the CBD products, come in. Uh, capsules, they come in oils, they come in creams, and they come in gummies as well. Uh, so it looks like this company is marketing their gummies. I'm not sure what the milligrams are, but yeah, but CBD and hemp, yes, it does help with pain relief. It does help with anxiety. It does help with arthritis and inflammation. So are you asking, is the product legit? It sounds too good to be true. Well, no, I will say hemp in and of itself is. I can't vouch for the effectiveness of the product that they mail to you, but the hemp products that we carry, uh, our patients have pretty much 99% have all gotten a great result from it. And, it. and it happens quickly, so what I've been doing now is just sampling it. Uh, come in the pharmacy, viewer, and sample the cream. If you got arthritis in your hands, we'll give you one pump. Let you try that, your ankle, your back, and I will say that most everybody, you know, feels it before they leave, and that's usually within five minutes. Mm. Uh, but, you know, but it helps other conditions other than pain. But no, it's not too good to be true. If their product was properly made, then, you know, you could probably, you know, believe the claims, but I'm not sure about, you know, that particular company. But in general, uh, well-made hemp products, yes, ma'am, they do help with a variety of health conditions. Okay. I thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. Ella, welcome to Pharmacist on Call. I mean, we help you. Hello, Ella? Hello? Hello? Yes, how you doing? Okay. How may I help uh, you? What I'm calling up, yeah, what I'm calling about is the beet juice. Uh-huh. 
just like, just like if, if they have high blood pressure and then uh, they take it down, but then if they, if they stay low, but then can you still drink the beet juice? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good question. Yes, you can because it has other health benefits. Uh, so it's also uh -huh. good for diabetes. If you are someone who is anemic, it's also good for low iron. If you're trying to get your cholesterol down, it's great for cholesterol. If you have liver disease, uh, it has a, a compound in it called betaine, which helps heal and detoxify the liver. So beetroot juice is good, you know, whether or not you have high blood pressure. And so it won't take it down no lower? No, no, it won't. What it does is it, it, uh, it establishes balance. Uh, so it'll okay. open up your vessels, but not to the point that you're gonna pass out or anything like that. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good I question, Brother Mark. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, everyone, stay right there. We're up on our first break. <laughs> 